do a video uh, showing uh, a new wheel that we got from Radiac. It's a green silicon carbide wheel. We're going to be graining titanium with it. Uh, my first experience is just a couple days ago uh, when I posted on Instagram some of the results I've had. This wheel was special made uh, to some of my specifications that I asked for as close as they could. Uh, I got the wheel uh, in case anybody's interested. Uh, I got it from this Nor Norchuk Supply and uh, the sales rep I deal with is John uh, Arder and if you like what you see in today's video and you'd like to get one of these wheels uh, he's the guy you'd have to contact and uh, Adam will take a picture of the card so you get all the contact information he'll be the guy you need to contact for it. Uh, all the research I've done before I uh, tried working on titanium uh, and using this green silicone uh, carbide wheel was uh, everything I've read, read and uh, studied on it and people's personal experience kind of left me a little bit thinking I might have to throw the towel in on this one. And so, so I approached it uh, a little bit uh, wondering what I got myself into. But this wheel radiate made up for me. Uh, thing really worked really nice. I was surprised on it. And then one of the methods that I used uh, to get a good finish on it was like I did with that aluminum where I'm painting uh, the surface. I'm painting it with an undiluted uh, coolant and then I'm running a flood coolant on it and that made a huge difference on uh, the finish. And we'll probably share some of the pictures that I have on Instagram demonstrating that. But before we go there uh, I just want to mention about our boring bars. We got our fixture set up now where we can make the 3 8 and the half inch bars. And uh, so that's all working out pretty good. Uh, we have a new friend that we've met on Instagram. His name is Eric. Uh, he, uh, his company is uh, a Grimlock company if I remember right. And uh, I'll put a link in the description uh, if you want to check out uh, his Instagram page. He does a lot of uh, laser work and uh, uh, we want to get these laser etched and he ran some samples on uh, some of uh, his own tooling and stuff that he had uh, laying around and uh, he posted those on Instagram. I'll give you a link uh, where we can uh, have our uh, solid rock machine shop put on here and uh, he said if we can come up with a nice logo that uh, he can even do that. And so. So it's kind of fun working with him on that project and he's done some pretty fantastic stuff already. I've never been around lasers and used them. I've, I've heard of them and uh, I've never seen him operating. I've seen him just standing there before. And uh, so it's a whole new field for me. So anyways, uh, check out his page. Uh, when it comes to grinding the titanium, uh, the reason I tried uh, why well, I want to give this a try is because I have a, a number of knife makers uh, that follow us on this channel and uh, Instagram as well and I've been asked by a few of them if that uh, I would uh, be able to grind titanium give them some tips and never working in titanium period and really never using this green uh, silicon carbide wheel other than on a pedal stick grinder I have no experience on it and I know when I'm grinding aluminum, uh, Robin Renzini, uh, he, he would tell me that the ticket to grinding aluminum, cast iron, and other things is the green silicon carbide wheel. And I thought, it's, I guess it's time I start getting a little experience with it. But anyhow, we got from uh, Alpha Knife Supply. We bought uh, this sheet. It's 164 thousandths. It's a 6-4 uh, titanium sheet. And I cut a section of that off. And what I did is... Uh, I beveled these edges over here at 45 degrees on both sides. Titanium is not magnetic and I need a way to mount that on the table uh, so uh, that I can hold it. And so I just come up with this kind of cheap and dirty uh, device right here that I can hold this. I got 45 degree angles here and here and I got a stationary uh, I don't know what your rail, I guess I'll call it, right here. And this one moves and it'll slide on these two dowel holes. And then I have a dowel pin sitting over here so I can slide the part and I already got that side. Well, yeah, maybe I better go with that. This is 164 uh, thousandths 
stock but I already ground this uh, a little bit in the Instagram video and so we're going to be starting uh, let me hold that up right we're going to be starting at about 154 and a half and that's where we're going to start at I'm going to attempt uh, to go ahead and just take about 10 to 15 thousandths off just so you can see how nice this wheel works but anyways uh, you got these 245's they'll slide in here and again this is kind of just a, a cheap and dirty uh, fixture but what I can do is I can slide that in and with this middle screw I'll just, I'll just come up until it's kind of snug this dowel over here is grown lower but that will hold as the wheel's traveling across the party to keep it from shooting out there. Uh, I'll come up and I'll just snug these ones up. And I don't want to put a lot of pressure because of, I, I'm pinching it. And I don't want it to bow up this way. Uh, if I had the steel, I wanted to make this taller and I wanted the hold downs to go down. It would have been a lot better design. But uh, to get a video just to demonstrate uh, this wheel with the titanium, this will do plenty good. So I'm not reefing it tight, I'm just I'm just snugging them down. Also, I got me a respirator better than uh, them very uncomfortable ones that you've seen me use uh, in the past. And this one's kind of a nice design. Because I can uh, put it on. Right now you probably can't hear me talk. It's all muffled, but this is kind of nice because it's got a feature over here. It'll loosen that up. Now, now I can talk nice and easy. Uh, so uh, it's a lot more comfortable than other masks, and it's going to be a lot easier to be able to talk and yet put it on for protection when I'm grinding. I don't know uh, how dangerous the silicon carbide, uh, the titanium, but I do know when I'm dressing that wheel, it does leave quite a big, uh, bigger uh, cloud of dust than uh, aluminum X, uh, oxide will. So, so I'm going to wear a respirator and uh, I'll do my speaking uh, without uh, the mask on so you can hear me. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over to the grinder. I've had uh, three or four people wanted me to go over some of the principles on dressing a wheel. And uh, they've had trouble in the past of getting good finishes and other things that is, uh, is taking place and and they believe it might be in the dressing of the wheel and in my opinion all the years of my grinding probably the two biggest things that I look for for successful grinding that I pay the most attention to it's the wheel selection having the right wheel for the right job and it's also uh, dressing uh, dressing will compensate for a lot of things if you do it right and there's a lot of things that uh, you can do wrong in dressing that can really uh, hinder the success of a part. So we're going to focus a little bit on the dressing of the wheel uh, as well. So I'm going to turn on the three-phase generator. Uh, we're going to go over and we're going to start grinding. And uh, uh, it's extremely windy out here. I don't know how that's going to play in the audio, if it's going to be uh, a big issue or not. But uh, the weather is pretty bad out there right now. Right now the wheel is not on, so it's not going to hurt if I touch it, just so uh, I'm just going to keep it off and so I can demonstrate. One of the first things I want to point out, probably one of the most common mistakes I see, and I see this mistake take place with uh, people that have been grinding number numerous years, and they will stick a single point diamond, and that's what this is, it's a single point diamond. They will stick it, and correctly, uh, they find the center line of the wheel and then they move off the center line a little bit. And the reason you move off the center line is if you're dressing on that side of the center line, what will happen is that, that wheel catches, it will dig and it will, will, it will want to kick that diamond that way. As it kicks that way, it will de dig deeper into the wheel and it can make a very serious accident. If you're on this side of the center line of the wheel uh, and the diamond catches, or the magnet's not on, it will just scoot the diamond a little bit. It will not dig into the wheel because you get your curve coming up over here. There's plenty of clearance, and uh, uh, it might scare you 
that it's very doubtful it's going to hurt you. But one of the most common mistakes people make is they take this diamond, a single point, you want to mount it at an angle, but they assume that they want that pointed off to the side and pointed to the center line of the wheel. It needs to be on an angle, but it's not for that reason. You want to turn this diamond this way. You can also use it this way or this way. You do not want to do it this way. Because if you turn your diamond this way, and it's pointing to the center of the wheel, as you dress, as you dress that wheel, you're grinding on the point of that diamond, and you're grinding a flat on that, and it's on the center line of uh, uh, the steel shaft that's on there. So every time you turn that to get a sharp edge, you can't get a sharp edge because uh, you're grinding the flat on the center line of that pin. On the other hand, if I exaggerate this, and you had an angle over here, and you dressed your wheel, what would be happening is you would be wearing a flat, not in line with the center line, but you would be lining, uh, grinding the flat this way. And once the uh, diamond got dull, if you would rotate it, you know, a quarter of a turn, well, this flat will have a sharp edge on two sides. Now you rotate it up, and now you have another sharp edge that you can cut with. And as it gets dull, you rotate it, and, and uh, you get another sharp edge. And so that diamond will last a long time. Uh, but if you set it up like this, this diamond will be shot probably in just a few uh, times of dressing a wheel. So this is a single point diamond. I, for the last probably two decades, have been preferred using these cluster diamonds. There's about five or six diamonds that are mounted in here. <coughs> When you use a cluster diamond, you want it mounted in your block and you want it straight up. And what you'll do at that point, when you uh, line it up on your wheel, you want to line it right up on the center line of your wheel. And this diamond, actually, I get a better finish with it. It, it stays sharp longer. I've had these things last probably five years. And, and when you're dressing with it, you can hear when they start getting dull. And the thing is, you can loosen it, you can turn it a quarter of a turn, and now you've got different edges again that you can come on here. And uh, it, uh, uh, you just keep, keep turning it, and, and, and away you go. Some of the diamonds are on the outside edge, some are towards the center, and uh, the, the things are just amazing. And so, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. Uh, move this out of the way a little bit, turn the magnet on, and turn the wheel on. Put this wheel up. And I already got a, a thaw or two that's a war in that direction from uh, trying to take some stock, actually grinding the coro. I did a pretty nice job in that. So I'm, I'm going to true it up just a little bit. I'm going to put this mask on. As you can see, that does kick up quite a cloud compared to uh, your aluminum oxide. And uh, the thing with this uh, diamond, I don't know if you can hear it in the audio. I was talking, uh, uh, well, two of the knife makers that asked me about granite titanium. One is uh, Seth Turner, 
Uh, he's, I'll put a link uh, to his Instagram page. Uh, but that's uh, Mascus Custom Knives, and then you got Dave Myers, which uh, I mentioned in the past, and it's Ethenberg uh, Knives. And he's got a YouTube channel as well as an a Instagram channel. But uh, one thing, I was talking to Seth on the phone the other day, and told him I will try to give some pointers on the dressing. Uh, I can hear when I'm grinding with this diamond that it sounds better as I'm going that direction. When I come back this way, it sounds louder. Now when I'm rough dressing on this, I go ahead and take off stock, and I take off probably a couple thou at a time, and then I use a pretty fast traverse, because I'm just roughing it out. And I usually uh, like to take about 10 thousandths to 12 thousandths total when I'm truing up a wheel, dressing it. <clears throat> and uh, so when I make my final pass, I want to cut in the direction where that diamond sounds the quietest. So it's that direction while I'm making my final pass. And uh, the other thing that you want to do, when you make your final pass, you want to slow the traverse. You don't want to really kick it. It's going to open up the wheel too much and uh, you'll suffer on your finish. The other thing is if you go really slow, your wheel's going to start burning in your work. You're going to get burn marks. So you've got to play around and experiment. You've got to get the right traverse speed. That makes a huge difference in the outcome of your grind. Also, one of the things that you don't ever want to do is you don't want to keep taking blank passes. You take one pass on your finish. Don't blank pass it back. Don't blank pass it multiple times. It's going gonna, it's gonna to end up burning your parts and you're going to have burn marks in it. The other thing that's important when you dress your wheel is on that last pass is the depth of cut. Uh, with a 46 grit wheel, I usually like between one and two thousandths on my last pass. If you get into finer wheels, you're probably going to want to be less. If you get 120 grit, 150 grit, you might want to cut that down to a little bit under a thousandths. Now this wheel is a 60 grit J, and it, uh, uh, one of the things they have is an open structure. If there's some other things in the secret sauce here, I'm not aware of it. But those are the things that I'm aware of on this wheel. And uh, so I'm going to finish dressing. I got it rough. I'm going to just finish it up now. I raised my wheel before I brought it back. Another thing I, which is, should be pretty obvious, when you're dressing your wheel, you get your magnet on and you, you want to have your cable locked. You want it so this isn't going to move. Lock it. If, if it can move around, uh, it's going to be dangerous and you're definitely not going to get a good uh, result. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and touch off and I'm going to feed a thousandths at a time and I'm going to take 10, 10, 12 thousandths off and I'm not going to be, excuse me, I'm not going to be concerned about the finish. I just want to remove stock at this point. 
And so I'll do it uh, more aggressive that way. And this wheel, you can see it actually grinds really nice. It sounds good. And with the, they got the right hardness in there because what will happen is if I, uh, yesterday I was taking off, I think about 11 thousandths, I ended up with eight and a half. So I could tell that the wheel was breaking away uh, in places, which was good. You want it to do that. And you, you could actually, a couple times in the titanium, uh, anybody that's ground titanium, they, they've probably seen it where that wheel will start heating up. Once it heats up, uh, it wants to pull up into the wheel. Uh, the nice thing over here, this wheel breaks away when it does that. And so uh, I tried to grind uh, off camera before I set up here with an aluminum oxide wheel, the pink one, just to see what would happen. I ground two thousandths and I didn't want to mess with it after that. It was just a disaster. That is definitely not going to work on something like this, but I just had to do it because I was curious. Get the wheel set at zero. Just pull over. Hold it. That was 11 thousandths right there, and if Adam can get up here, 
uh, that's at a thousand set at a time, and the wheel's breaking away, so I know we didn't get 11. But I just want you to look at the finish. You've seen how rough grinding I was getting. Is there a way you can get a look on that finish? Ed? going to do is I'm going to go down five tenths and about three tenths knowing that this wheel's got an angle on the bottom just to take some of the roughness out I'm going to redress the wheel and then I'm going to finish it out from there Uh, I took a total of uh, almost 12 thousandths off from the readout, but I know the wheel broke down, and so I know we don't have 12, but what I'm going to do at this point, I'm going to turn the mag on residual, clean this off, I'm going to redress it, and then uh, we can go from there. But uh, Adam, if you can get in there and get a close up and see what the finish we got right now, this is after taking a couple light passes from the other one. I gotta be careful how I bend over. I keep turning the microphone off, so sorry about that. But I just touched off, and what I'm gonna do, uh, if you watch some of our previous uh, videos on grinding aluminum, this is a little trick I was using to get a good finish. I would take uh, uh, undiluted coolant, this is straight coolant, and I would paint the surface with it. In this case, because I know heat's a big factor in titanium, I'm gonna be running the flood coolant with it, but uh, it's not strong enough, it's not going to wash all that away. Also, I don't know if it makes a difference whether you use oil base or synthetic. I don't like synthetic, so I always use a water soluble, an oil base, and I prefer that. Uh, if any of you look at the date when uh, we talked about changing the coolant and the filters, that's the last time this coolant was changed. I don't know what that date is, uh, but it, it smells just as fresh as the day I put it in. And the key to that is putting just a little uh, uh, aquarium tank aerator in there so the uh, air bubbles go and uh, using distilled water with your mix and then it, will, it won't go sour on you. Also, I, I got a filter system on it to keep uh, a lot of the crud out of it. Anyhow, you just take this and Paint that on there real nice. Turn the flood coolant on. And I'm just going to go down about two tenths, take a pass, and I'm going to do that about three or four times.
I'm going to stop right there. The finish is just awesome. Adam, if you can get a close-up on that. And by painting that on there, I don't know if it's causing the wheel to hydroplane a little bit or what's going on, but all I know is it definitely makes a huge difference in the finish. We'll pull it off right now and we'll just see how flat it is and then we'll check and see how much wheel breakage we got. Uh, I took a total of just a little under 12 and a half according to my digital. Uh, but uh, I know the wheel broke down and I'm sure we're a good three or four thousandths less than that. We started at 154 thousandths. I'll go clean this off a second. Okay, now we're going to just check and see how flat it is. Now this fixture itself, if I pull it out and put the plate on the granite, the fixture needs a little work on it, but this is just how it was in the grinder. I just want to see how flat I got that surface and if there's any distortion. That's why I'm leaving it in the fixture. You can see that is extremely flat. It's, it's easy within two tenths, probably closer to one. And that's how flat that came out. And then we had a super good finish on it as well. Uh, let's turn the light back on. Uh, so anyways, that's, that's my experience the third time now that I've actually grown titanium. Uh, I don't know if I can spin it around here, if I can give you a better picture. I'm just trying to, trying to get it so that you can see the, the finish, which uh, that finish is better than when I get on steel most of the time. It, I, I was really surprised. So I want to I wanna thank uh, John Arter for getting this wheel. Uh, I was asked on Instagram what this wheel cost. Uh, John got this. He worked something out with Radiac. He got this wheel for me for free just so I can try it to see how it works. And uh, I, I love it. So far, I, it, it's great. I need to try it on aluminum and cast iron and see how it works on there. And maybe that will be the subject of a future video. And again, if you guys are interested, he said that uh, any, if I want other wheels uh, similar like that, he said they'd be about $50. Uh, but uh, this company that John works for, uh, Norchuk Supply, they carry the Radiac wheels. And so you can uh, get those. If you're interested in it, get a hold of John Arter, uh, and then uh, tell him that Steve from Solid Rock Machine Shop, uh, and tell him you saw this wheel in a video, and if you're interested in one, he can set you up and uh, uh, hopefully get you one and that you can try it out. The fixture built, uh, again, it was just something that we were trying to uh, make so that we could uh, hold this titanium with, kind of solid, and uh, I just want to give thanks to my son Jeremiah. Uh, because he actually built about 80% of this. He did a super good job on it and uh, uh, I'm training him and as I'm training him uh, he's, he's just coming along super. He's picking up really fast. He's starting to get excited about it. I'm getting excited about it. So again, uh, about 80% of the build was Jeremiah. We had a good day today uh, working on it. So anyhow, this is titanium. It's grinding with that green silicon wheel. Be sure to check out Eric's page at Grimlock uh, Company. Uh, you can see the etching uh, or the uh, uh, name of our company that we'll be putting on the boring bars. And uh, I'll put all this stuff uh, in the description so you can look at these other links. Anyways, that'll be it for today. Thanks for watching.